Kia ora, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Check Me Out. And this is a really great one um, when we talk about the environment and really important things uh, with sustainability and things that you really, if you can have the opportunity to do with your brand and your packaging, then I highly suggest that you go through this process. And that is the B Corp process. And what better to have um, with the B Corp process than with that B Corp guy, Tim? <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, so, self, self-appointed title, but I'll, okay. I'll, ta- I'll take it anyway. Hey, yeah. look, take whatever you can get, you know? <laughs> yeah. Welcome, Tim. Um, so can you tell us uh, just a, a, about B Corp and how it works um, and why yep. it's important? Yeah, totally. So... B Corp certification is essentially third-party independent verification of your company's social and environmental performance. Um, So it is initially uh, an online assessment that you take that looks at your business's operational performance across five main areas, which is governance, workers, community, environment, and customers. And so you you do this assessment and you need to score um, a minimum of 80 out of 200 points on the assessment And once you've scored um, above 80 points, you then submit your self-assessment for independent verification by the audit team from an organization called B Lab. So B Lab is the company, is a a non-profit movement or organization that runs the certification program, but you become a certified B Corp by my company or, or others out there. So it's what I call a rigorous but achievable process to put your business through to see how you're doing. And recognize the good that you are doing, but also use it as an impact guide to go, oh, we've just never thought of that before. That's a really cool topic. That's a really cool idea. And that kind of resonates with who we are and what we're trying to do. Let's go and explore that and try and be better at that maybe in the future. Mm. So, yeah, you you go through the assessment. um, And I guess, yeah, really, why are people doing it? Well, we, we bring it back to four main pressures that we see affecting every business and it'll either be one or or all four of these typically your customers are wanting this um your employees would want this potentially investors like current investors or potential future investors will want this and depending where you are on the supply chain um there might be some supply chain pressures so if you're the person providing the extract into a product that's then being sold by them into a retailer you know increasingly that the manufacturer is going to be looking at their supply chain to go hey actually tell me more about you know where you're sourcing your products from and are you paying your team a good wage and what are you what's your environmental footprint so yeah those are the sort of the four main pressures that we're seeing and um particularly i think in the you know with the brands that that you know you're you're working with those consumer brands that have you know packaging that are, that are more direct to consumer if, if you're in the FMCG sector and you're not a B Corp in the near future, you're going to be mm. di- the dinosaur. And particularly more so if you're exporting outside of New Zealand into other markets. So in the UK now, there's over a thousand B Corps. And globally, there's, there's about 6,000 plus globally. Um, the vast majority of those are in personal care, health and beauty, food and beverage. Yeah. So that sector is massively represented. And so if you've got a product where you're making claims, you know, about it's natural or it's health based or what have you, um, what well, is it? You know, put it through an independent certification program and see if you meet meet the bar, because um, yeah. that's what more and more people are doing. I think it's really important now. Um, I, I would say that COVID had a massive helping hand and actually for people to be really taking a decent look at what they're actually um, what they're buying and what they're purchasing and we're really yep. need to know we're really keen to know now exactly what is going into our products and how and how good they are 100 so, percent um it's let's uh, let's focus a uh let's focus on skincare it's always a, a yep. hot topic at the moment if i had a a skincare a moisturizer um that i wanted to get b corp certified um and you mentioned we go and we do the online um assessment what happens if I get less than 80 on that score? What What's the next process then? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's not uncommon that on the first attempt, you don't score 80. So the median score on first attempt globally is 50 out of two. So it's a total of 200 points. 50 out of 200 is the median score on first attempt. Um, really, at that case, it, or when you get to that point, there's a couple of things you can do. Um, 
at that point, well, I guess that's kind of really why we exist as a business, because quite often what people have done is they've mis- they've misinterpreted the questions. Mm. And most people, particularly Kiwis, we're really humble and we understate what we think we're doing. So quite often there's points that you've left on the table that you're like, oh, I don't think we're really doing that. Or surely we can't be as good as this global framework suggests that we think we might be. Mm. So that's definitely one of it, one part of it. The second part, though, is um, actually then having a look at where you've fallen short and going, OK, where do we need to do better? Um, and like I said, that's what's a really useful guy, because m- most of the questions are um, they'll either be multiple. Like you can take one one of six levels um, and so it might be just, yeah, you, you choose one of six or there could be six or four different options and you might be able to tick all four of them. And so in some cases, it's a case of like, well, we're currently at level one. How do we get to level two, three or four? And it might be something like, uh, you know, having a policy in place or changing a procedure or looking at yeah w- whatever it is that you might need to do. So, yeah, sometimes it's a case of just making sure you're being um a bit a bit less harsh on yourself when answering the questions but equally sometimes it's like actually you're generally not currently meeting the mark so um yeah th- think about where you can do good T- typically new zealand companies we score really well on the workers section because we have a lot of favorable trade wins so we have you know government provided healthcare superannuation um we have you know leave entitlement so on and so forth so typically the workers section is is a, is a relatively easy one to get some good points on I think what's probably reassuring for people listening or watching is almost every company that we've helped with B Corp, and this is every company from service companies through to product manufacturers or or retailers, very few people have got great clarity on their supply chain. Mm. So if you're worried that, oh, we we don't know, we don't really know what's happening on the supply chain, you're actually in the vast majority of people. And most companies are kind of, we buy all our stuff off a guy called Dave or a lady called Janet in Auckland. And they seem really lovely, but we don't really know where they get their stuff from. And that's most people. And like, that's okay. Just recognize that and and recognize that that's an area that you need to be, you're going to need to, you know, improve on. And yeah, that's quite amazing, actually, with the supply chain thing is because as a consumer, a lot of people wouldn't know that. And most people assume that, you know, where you're getting your your vanilla and your cupcakes kind of a thing. And and, and so I think like having this B Corp there is, is a really good way, um, you know, like having the Heart Foundation tick or the Health yep. Start rating or something like that to, to actually so that consumers in a really simple way can understand that, yeah, this product checks out. 100%. And, and that, that was a big driver behind, you know, what B Corp's all about. It's that trust and accountability. And that, in, you know, that's and that's what I personally like. It. it is not the perfect framework or rating system. There's plenty of stuff that's wrong with it. There's parts of the the questionnaire or questions that they ask that I don't actually agree with. I think it's you know that's too much that you shouldn't be talking about. Or, and and everyone's got an opinion on the assessment, but it's the only framework that's globally recognised, independently verified, and social and environmental impact. And that's why I like it because exactly that when when you as a consumer when you see the B logo on the brand you know that that company has gone through a rigorous assessment process and it's not just we've paid some money to a body and they've given us a, a logo to put on our you know yeah. on our website or on our product and there's plenty of those out there and a lot of people don't don't know that and they they see that and i think that's why b corp is getting some cut through i mean it's still relatively fringe when you think you know there's just over 100 b corps in new zealand 6000 globally that works out at about 0.01% of businesses around the world and and the same sort of figure in New Zealand are B Corp. So we're not even at the, like the 1% of the business world doing B Corp, but it is massively gaining traction with consumer awareness and people increasingly that conscious consumer is looking for that B logo and are making that decision based on this, like you're both making claims, you both taste good, you both, you know, we both feel good. Mm. I'm going to go with this one, though, because I know that it's been independently verified. It's backed up because, you know, the greenwashing stuff is is real. Yeah. Let's talk about the greenwashing for a minute here. Um, and for those that don't know about greenwashing, what is it and what's the difference between uh, greenwashing and B Corp? So I think my definition of greenwashing would be typically and as a reformed sales guy, I always like to pick on the marketing department. It's typically, you know, marketing based claims that are unsubstantiated or are so loosely framed that it could mean anything. So, you know, we have more more sustainable options in our store for you. Okay, well, what does that mean? What what does sustainable mean to you? What does more sustainable mean? Or are you actually meaning it's less rubbish than we used to have? It's like when there's any sort of um, 
vagueness, yeah, or or lack of transparency around the specific claim. Um, that's that would be a part of it. And then I think the second part of it would be the fact that it's a claim that you're making that you you know well who's who's audited the numbers or or, or the theory that you you're espousing. Um, and again, that's where B Corp is different. It's it's a it's a framework. It's harmonized globally. So if you're doing this, the same company in the USA or the UK or Australia, like they're doing this, you get the points recognition and an auditor has looked at that and gone, show me the evidence that you're doing that. So if you're making claims around, yeah, like, you know, we are organic, so, you know, we've got organic produce or we have a health benefit to our products or um, we use less resource in our product than a, a competitor products, we'll prove it. And, and I think that's where, you know, there's particularly, I think in the cosmetics industry, um, th there's some well-known brands out there that, you know, put some claims on the back of their bottles or on their packets say, you know, we're more environmentally friendly, you know, we're on the journey to being plastic free or what have you. Whereas I, I always sort of compare, you know, Etique is one of my favorite cosmetics yeah. brands or healthcare brands, because you, you look at the box of the, of you know, of the product and it's B Corp certified. I think they're living wage certified. They're bunny, leaping bunny certified. They're, you know, plastic free. Like they, there's so many certifications on the packet that you just know that they're the real deal. Mm. Um, and I always kind of hold a teak as a mental model or an example in my head because they're really hard to hate because everything they're doing is really good. They've got a great products. It smells great. It feels great. It's ethically you know, sourced. It's environmentally friendly. It's really hard to look at them and go, yeah, but you're not doing this. Whereas mm -hmm. I think, you know, that, that for me is, is what you need to ask yourself as a company is if, you know, if this was front page news, if people found out actually how we do this, would, would there be riots in the street or actually would people be giving us medals and commending us for how amazing we are and and deep down i think we all know where we're not doing what we should be doing in our businesses yeah. and then you know it's a case of acknowledging that and then and then working on it and, yeah. and i think yeah that's that's the greenwashing but you know equally there's also the green hushing which is where yes. you've got companies doing amazing stuff who don't want to talk about it for fear that they're going to be accused of greenwashing and again this is this is where i kind of bring it back to b corp it's like well if you've been independently verified and it's authentic and you're genuinely doing it tell that story because people want to hear those stories it's if if you're you know making it up or or you're making it bigger than it actually is yeah you, you shouldn't be doing it but yeah it's, it's, it's i guess it's like the goldilocks um school yeah. of marketing not too hot not too cold just right <laughs> look we're doing exactly. some good stuff we're not perfect but we're doing the best we can yeah and and thinking about the generations going forward and how like gen z and and um these are the people who are becoming a lot more environmentally conscious than say myself who grew up in, in the single use plastic zone um yep. i think that it's it's good education you know and it, like i said it's a very simple kind of thing um i think i could liken it to the fact like if you want to go and make a health claim on your say you want to say it's high in protein then by regulations you have to have it you know it has to be represented on your nutritional info otherwise yep. you can't make that claim so what you're trying what essentially a b corp is doing is it's the backup it's the it's that certificate it's that part of the nutritional information for the environment yep. that says yep. um you know actually yeah what they're saying when they're saying it's plastic free when they're saying it's um, comes from organically certified farms when it comes from this when yep. it comes from that um then absolutely it's it's fine um yeah so when we think about products uh, and you say there are, are only a very few um, New Zealand brands that are are doing this why do you think yep. that is do you think that has a lot to do with the fact that in New Zealand we um uh, we have to source from overseas from unknown suppliers a lot of the time um so I think, I mean, there's increasing numbers of B Corps coming through in New Zealand. Um, so we're currently at 100, but there is a large number of companies going through the process right now. So it's definitely, you know, getting there. And it's like I said, it's definitely being led by that um, FMCG consumer brand sector. I think where where locally there's there's probably more reticence is is that true lack of, of customer recognition. Mm. But I think that's changing. So more often than not the companies that we're helping with b corp are export focused companies who see b corp you know as a ticket to that credibility in an overseas market whereas if they were just selling locally they might be less um you know convinced that it was something that they should be doing right now but what we're seeing is as more companies that are local who are exporting now have the logo in supermarket or in store in new zealand 
that's now putting pressure on the sector, you know, broadly to go, okay, actually, you know, uh, so I guess like um, in the food sector, you know, uh, peanut butter is a great example. There's Fix and Fog and Pix Peanut Butter, both B Corp, both New Zealand based companies. Mm. Fix and Fog very much, you know, it was part of their US entry strategy, but it's still on the logos in the supermarket here in New Zealand. So all of a sudden now, if you're in the peanut butter or the, or the nut butter range, okay, well, the two sort of probably the two biggest brands um, you know, in New Zealand are both B Corp. So there's now pressure in your sector to go, mm, okay, hang on a minute, maybe we should look at this. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think that local pressure is coming. Um because you know, even some of the big brands, you know, like Unilever Australia, New Zealand is now a B Corp. So mm-hmm. I, I think the first brands that are coming through, so not all of their brands are B Corp certified, but I think it's like Magnum, Persil, um, and one of their shampoo brands are are gonna have the B Corp logo in store pretty soon. Oh, so fantastic. yeah so all of a sudden you get a big player in the market you know for you if you're the small small to medium um you know kind of like uh battler trying to take on on the big guys wow okay all of a sudden you know b corp is maybe table stakes because for credibility around your social enterprise performance if the big guys can get it and and you're trying to tackle them based on health or environmental impact claims you know we were talking to someone yesterday um in a um i guess like in the food and beverage sector and and they were like oh look we we kind of want to do b corp uh, but we're just not sure because there's there's a couple of global uh you know almost multinational type companies in our sector and we and we just don't really we, we think we're better than them and i said well that's I, I get it and you might be kind of wondering well how, how come they got b corp well they've met the requirements they've they've passed the test so, so they are a b corp so mm-hmm. i sort of said well really your, your best response is just to be a better B Corp than them, you know, and, yeah. and outperform them and be able to demonstrate that with the data and go, yes, these guys are good, but actually we're better than that. And this is how, and this is why, and then use the verification, use the impact, you, you know, use the certification framework to tell the story of where you're doing the good. And they were like, okay, yeah, we see your point. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. What are the, what are some of the commonalities that come up with um if there are any and particularly say in the so if we talk in food and beverage, what um what are there any commonalities that come up with the New Zealand brands um with issues, you know, with getting that score up? Like say, yep. for example, obviously we talked about supply chain, but are there anything that come any kind of things that come up or any I guess tips or solutions you might have for those issues with people? Yeah, I mean supply chain hands down is is continually time after time that is the big area um the other one would be measurement and reporting of environmental performance so waste management um management of emissions uh power usage quite often uh companies might be using a you know a third party manufacturer um or have third party distribution and it's it's suddenly a bit harder to measure um or you know even if they have their own facility measuring energy usage and water usage but if you're in a shared facility with other manufacturers or other retailers you you can't get that level of detail on what your power bill or what your water usage is so Mm -hmm. that's those would be the the two biggest areas but again it's kind of reassuring because as more and more people are having that problem um, or looking to get that solution they're now going to their landlords and saying hey actually I'd like you to split out what my power bill is and I'd like you to find out how much water we are using because I actually want to measure that. So, and we get, we, 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 we hear from clients that they get mixed responses from landlords. Some of them are on that journey themselves. Others are kind of like, I really don't care about what your power usage is. Just keep paying the rent and uh, yeah. we're, all, we're all happy. So yeah, those would be the two. Um, and like I say, yeah, the supply chain, we, we're just seeing a lot of people and our advice is kind of always year one, just get B Corp. Don't, don't sweat about becoming a better company just just get even if you sneak in with an 80.1 like get the b corp get the benefit of having the certification and being able to tell that story and then look at where you need to make the improvements Mm -hmm. and so yeah we've got a lot of clients who we're now working with and introducing them to other experts around that supply chain um, to get that and you know phase one as, as anything is always just awareness like actually and then and that in fact that would be probably the one one big piece of advice and that's something that we help people with is you know send a survey and, and reach out to your suppliers and just tell them, hey, this social and environmental impact stuff is important to us. And we're about to go through this process of measuring our footprint. And as part of that, we want to have a conversation with you. And I'd, I'd probably say most of the time, you know, most suppliers in, in people's supply chains, that this they won't be the only company that's asking them that information all of a sudden. You and would so, hope not, I think. I think yeah. you would probably find that more yeah. and more people... More and more. Um, 
more and more people will be yeah. asking them and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I think probably, and and I mean, you can absolutely clear the air on this and that. Um, a lot of New Zealand food and beverage companies are obviously ordering, um, and when I talk about packaging in particular, are going to be ordering yep. packaging out of China. Yep. China, um, obviously not having an amazing reputation for their, you know, from a consumer perspective, yep. um, their amazing yep. perspective, um, sort of, uh, you know, on being particularly environmentally friendly. Would yep. you agree with that? Or would you say that there are challenges based around there? And what can people do about that? Yeah, I mean, I guess there's two parts to that. So so the packaging one is just a nightmare. There, there is, there are often or, or most most times there are very few obvious choices where one is significantly better than the other when it comes to packaging even when it comes down to glass you know you kind of go well glass is infinitely recyclable yes but it's heavier therefore we're making more emissions <laughs> more pollution when we ship it um yeah. a lot of the bioplastics you know actually aren't biodegradable yeah. so there's claims so it just is you know in the end, you, you kind of just go. And one of our clients, Gourmates, they do um, like uh, uh, pet treats, so yeah. it's all, all like like human grade food for pets. Uh, they spent about eighteen months examining their packaging, and I think in the end, they almost went back to where they started, and they've yeah. gone down this. It's like there's no good solution. But again, as more and more companies are going, actually, this isn't good enough, and consumers are pushing back. It's not going to be long. A mate of mine says, you know, th there's there's a 16 year old somewhere in the world who's invented the packaging solution. We just haven't found them yet. You know, yeah. they've done they've done some school projects and they're just waiting to be picked up by some some big company or investor, and they're gonna they'll they'll solve that. But yeah, so the more and more pressure you can put as a manufacturer or or as a company on your packaging to supplier to say actually like this isn't good enough. You know, th there's enough companies now that want the solution that I think the solution will be coming. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of the China one, I think that's a really interesting one because, you know, yes, there are clear and obvious, you know, labor violation right uh, or labor rights violations and, and environmental, uh, you know, violations. And I think they put like, what was it, 50 new coal, coal powered fire stations, uh, yeah. coal fired power stations online in China last year uh, or, or a couple of years ago. So, yeah, it's, it's, you know, there's stuff going on over there that's not great. But equally, you look at companies like Yumei who have got a standard of manufacturing in China where they have reintroduced artisan handcrafted you know, knowledge into manufacturing in China and are, 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 you know, top level manufacturing facility with great labor conditions, with great environmental conditions. So I think, again, for me, it's it's that case of transitioning from the mindset of you know, if, if you if you're if you've been following the for profit mindset, then yeah, obviously you will go and find the cheapest suppliers because that's what makes the most sense. Like we, you know, cheap cheap input, sell it for for the highest cost or highest price, we're winning. So I think it, it's on on each individual company to think about what actually you know where are we sourcing from, and I think there's a lot of companies again that we've we've worked with on their B Corp where they're now having that conversation with their supplier to say actually do you know what we want to work with you and that and you get points recognition on the B Corp assessment for working with your supply chain to increase their standards mm. so I think yeah and um, I mean Eagle Protect is another great example so they were B Corp number one in New Zealand they sell single-use disposable rubber gloves for food hygiene um you know uh, sort of uh, processing and, and medical uh, devices or, or medical um, clinics and, you know, they are really hot on their supply chain because you, Steve, the CEO, he, he has waxed lyrical for years about, you know, most of the rubber gloves that are being used in most of the food processing or food handling and medical clinics around the world actually are coming from factories where there are significant labor, you know, labor um, yeah. law violations. And there's he's got photos of factories where there are cockroaches and bugs walking all over the gloves that are being packed into a box and sold as a sterile glove into a medical yeah. facility you know so he he went out of his way from day one to go we want to cut that out of the industry we want to be the company that has that reliable environmentally and socially responsible uh, product so you know and he has found that and he's worked with his supply chain so uh, you know there's good and bad happening in New Zealand. There's good and bad happening in the UK, US, Australia. Yeah. There's good yeah. and bad happening everywhere. It's it's up for you to be aware of what's going on and have that conversation. But yeah, yeah, I wouldn't just discount the entire you know Chinese market because of some bad practices. When like I say, Yume is a great example where they've worked with that supply chain and they've they've shared knowledge and and shared you know created the standard that they want to operate at and they're they're smashing it. 
Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I've got a couple of factories in China that um, I've sought out for packaging, um, actually, and and speak spoken to the workers and various things. And I know where they yeah. are. I know what their factory looks like. Um, because for me, it's important, like, I feel now feel responsible, like if any of my clients are going to go for B Corp, and I put them onto packaging suppliers, it's like, yep. well, it's important for me. And it's important for people in the industry and other designers who are doing these brands to also understand that, like, yep. we have to be part of the change as well. Yep, 100%. And I think that's the thing, you know, and, and that's what that's why I think B Corp is increasingly becoming popular, because you're having that input, the customer's having that input, there's all these nodes of, of, of influence that are saying to the customer, company hey we want to know what's going on we want you to be doing the best that you can and i think that's always the thing for me is like you know don't don't feel stressed if you're not perfect because there is no 200 point b corp no one has won b corp yet mm. everyone's on the journey somewhere but start just start measuring today and see where you're at and yeah. do what you can with the resources that you've got with the time and, and humans that you've got available to just and, and that's why we call our b corp program be better it's like just be slightly better than you were yesterday no mm -hmm. one's expecting you to become perfect overnight. You know, yeah. it's, all, it's oh, all a journey. That's awesome. And so once somebody gets, uh, once somebody goes through the process and it's able to use that on their packaging, um, what is what happens from then? Is that it or is there any sort of follow-up that happens? Yeah, so in terms of the B Corp journey, so if you, let's say if you certified in this year, 2023, you would now recertify in 2026. So it's a three-year recertification cycle. So during those three years, the key really is to bake in any changes that you did make on that. You know, if there were small changes, policies, procedures, or updates to how you do stuff, you want to really bake those in and make sure that um, KPIs are spread across the company so that you know that people are tracking the metrics that you're now, you know, you're now tracking. But then really that the plan over that three year period is to work out how do you go beyond your initial score. So again, mm -hmm. the, the framework is really useful for downloading and, and you can basically do a gap analysis on where you haven't scored points where you have scored points and kind of go right well these are all the points available let's just have a look like what what can we do but i think also as part of that it's really important to do some stakeholder engagement and again you know the b corp certification journey it's it's really powerful i would 100 percent recommend you have to bring your team on the journey because there's so much value you get out of bringing your team because your team will be excited and inspired by knowing that you're wanting to be the best business you can be but also then bringing your customers and other stakeholders suppliers investors into the or on the journey with you and saying look we've got some areas here where we want to improve what's important for you because mm -hmm. it's it's a massive you know, if, if you've got limited resources and you can only spend X amount of time, money and, and, and labor on fixing stuff or being better in your business, you want to try and do the most impactful stuff for you and your stakeholders, you know, and the planet and community. So it's really key that you understand well, where, and, and even down to the point of, you know, impact measurement and really working out because I guess there's some classic examples uh, like Tom Shoes, who used to do the, the buy one, give one. Yeah. And once they actually started measuring the impact, they realized it was making more negative impact than, you know, that they were thinking it was only going to be positive, but they hadn't considered actually in some of these places, people don't want shoes. And so us giving away a pair of shoes is actually not that useful. And we're creating more landfill. And now what happens to the shoes? So th that's a really key part of it. Is sometimes we have really well-intentioned ideas as to how we want to do more good, but sometimes you're actually putting the car in, into reverse and sixth gear and smashing it backwards so yeah. yeah understand actually what impact are we going to have think about unintended consequences work out what impact is worth you pursuing that is going to make the most difference and mean something to the people around you otherwise you know you're going to die on a hill that no one cares about yeah <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little um tell us a little bit about be better about what it is um that specifically about um what it is that you do that yeah. um can help people with b corp Yep. So essentially, we um, are all about speeding up the process for you to get your B Corp done, making it a bit more fun um, and making it just quicker and easier. So um, like I say, you can go to if you if you just Google B Impact Assessment, you can go and find the B Corp um, online assessment tool. You can register for an account that is completely free. It always has been free. And I imagine it always will be free. And so you can go and have a play with that. Pretty much what we find is, is um, you know, people are busy. Um, they don't understand the questions entirely. They misinterpret some of the questions um, and they think that they need lots of evidence and reporting to be able to answer the questions. And so really what we are is almost like a translator um, or like an after school tutor where we just sit down with you. And I, I guess it's like an open book exam 
um, but the uh, you haven't been given the book yet, and then you get the book, and it's in Swahili, and so we 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 are the translators of Swahili, as it were. So we we can help you understand what the questions mean, provide you some advice around. Okay, look, you're currently getting 0.25 of a point out of out of one point available here. For you to get the remaining points, actually, all you'd need to be able to do is do A, B, C. Do you think you can do that? And you go, yeah, actually, we can easily do that. Great. Okay. Well, that's your homework. Go do that. You'll be able to get those points. Um, and we've also got a ton of resources. So we've, we call it our magic folder. So we've got over 300 different um, examples, templates, and other um, supporting documents. So for example, the, the really common ones would be um, smaller companies typically don't have a code of ethics, a whistleblower policy, and an ethical marketing policy. Well, those are three policies that if you do have, you're going to get some points for. So as long as you're not you know, spiritually opposed to having any of those policies in your business, well, we've got a template. It's yours. You know, implement it tell the team hey we know so one client said oh code of ethics the best time to uh, tell everyone we've got one of those is the week before the christmas party and i stand by that i think that's a really great time to launch a code of ethics um <laughs> so you know you can and, and that's, a, that's those are like classic examples of like implementing little changes that are quite easy to do that just lets the team know hey actually you know like we're growing up a little bit or actually you know how we operate is really important to us and we, we helped Janora with their B Corp. And one thing um, Monique, uh, the founder and Colleen, the, the COO says, is because they built the business, it was all in their head. And they just presumed that all the staff knew how, mm. you know, what what was available in terms of like days off or extra leave days or working from home or, you know, flexi hours, like little things like that. They just presumed everyone knew it. And everyone was like, no, I had no idea that we could do that. And it was going through the B Corp process where they had to write all that stuff down and put it in an employee handbook. And everyone was like, Wow, well, we had no idea. <laughs> so, oh, that's wonderful. So yeah, so yeah, we're all about just speeding up the process, um, helping you do it, you know, helping you get to that 80 points really is, is what we're all about. And then beyond that, we've got our own client community, a, a digital community, which we bring everyone into there. And, you know, we're for us, we we almost take it as a given that we'll help you get your B Corp, um, as long as you're doing what what needs to be done. What we're really about then is is helping you thrive as a B Corp. So connecting you with other people in our network um yeah helping you then work out actually how do we blow out the other side of b corp and, and become a really high scoring b corp that's making a whole lot of change in the world oh that's wonderful um and lastly what if you had any hopes um for the future of um for for b corp and, and just in general in the say the uh, food and beverage industry what would you like to see say in the next five to ten years happen yeah so i guess you know my my dream since connecting to the B Corp movement is that really all businesses would have to account for their for the impact of their operations. So, you know, at the minute you pretty much your only fiduciary duty as a as a CEO or director of a company is to file your tax return and, and trade legally. Um I think for me it would be really great to see within that five to ten year time that, that actually even if even if IRD at a basic level could just say, hey, um have you measured and reported your environmental impact this year? Yes or no. And have you made any contribution to your community, either through volunteering hours or through charitable donations? Yes. Like, I, I think we'll get beyond that. I think B Corp is increasingly, it's getting recognition at local, regional, national government levels. People people are seeing that it's a thing. So yeah, the, the, the big vision would be that pretty much operating as a, at a B Corp standard would just become business as usual. Wonderful. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, thank you so much um, for your time today, Tim. I'll get some no details worries. from you afterwards um, so that people can get in contact with you if they're keen to go through the process. Perfect. But, um, thank you for all that you do for the environment and for people in general with B Corp. And um, it was really awesome to chat with you today. Thanks for having me.